Good morning, everyone. Will you join me in looking at the announcements that are on the back of your bulletin as we start our church service? We have quite a list of people that we're going to be praying for this week. Um, I'd like to include Roberta Dorsey, who's going to have surgery Thursday. So please keep Roberta in your thoughts and your prayers that day and, and in the coming weeks for recovery. We formally welcome Warren Schmidt to our congregation as he's going to be baptized today. Um, he's been participating in our church services for several months now. He is our cameraman, so if you don't recognize him, it's because he's always in the balcony. So uh, be sure and welcome him after the church service. The pandemic is real and we're paying attention here at FCC and have done a great deal to keep our family safe. Thank you for wearing your masks. The communion is at back on the table. If you haven't gotten one for our communion service later, would you please um, do that so that you have it ready? And remember that you can watch our website, FCCAuroraNebraska.org, or on Cobalt TV, and that usually is toward the middle of the week, and also on YouTube. We've suspended the Monday night Bible study for the time being. And what we've done is everyone who has a book or would like a book, we will get one to you. And then we're passing the DVD around so that everyone has a chance to see the DVD and uh, have the book there. It, it really helps to have the DVD while you're studying. So um, Louise Mills has the DVD right now and um, she will be letting me know and if you i'll be calling people to see if you would like to get the dvd to watch that as you study there will be a short board meeting after church today and then next week will be the annual meeting there are some things that we need to discuss before we can put together the budget and so um, we're going to do that today and cover some other things and then next week we'll do the board meeting penny will be on vacation next week and the following week. Hope you have a great time. You're, you aren't gonna work the whole time, are you? Oh, no. <laughs> well, I hope you can have some fun in there somewhere. Um, I have a, a special little thing I wanna show you. Uh, my daughter-in-law, Christina, found these bears in the uh, shop at the hospital in Grand Island, and Jack got a bear. Well, then we got to looking at them and we're thinking, why shouldn't every child have a bear going through this pandemic trial? And so I'm going to read to you what the bear says. Sometimes you feel so small in a great big world. Sometimes you might feel like a giant that can climb any beanstalk. However, you are feeling I want you to know how important you are. Whenever you need a little comfort, a little safe, a little brave, just whisper in my ear and hold me tight, and I will be here for you. Every Sunday school child will get a bear. We've delivered three already, but Allison, would you like to come up and get your bear? Okay. We've tried over the summer to keep packets going to the children with storybooks and coloring pages and bracelets and rings and all types of things every month. So no packet this month. We're going to do the teddy bears in place of that. Are there any other announcements that I might have missed? Will you join me in the call to worship in your... Stevie's wife, her, Roberta's daughter-in-law, fell and broke her leg. Okay, so keep, please keep her in your thoughts and your prayers. Will you join me in the call to worship? There are different spiritual gifts, but the same spirit. And there are different ministries and the same Lord. 
Christ is just like the human body. A body is a unit, and all the parts of the body are one body, even though there are many parts. We were all baptized by one spirit into one body, whether Jew or Greek or slave or free. We were all given one spirit to drink. Come, Holy Spirit, let us worship God. Our first hymn is Take My Life and Let It Be, and the words are there for you on the wall, so let's join in in singing. Um, let's just stay seated. join in reading on the wall the Apostles Creed I believe in God the Father Almighty creator of heaven and earth I believe in Jesus Christ his only son our Lord who was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary he suffered under Pontius Pilate was crucified died and was buried he descended to hell the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended to heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Universal Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. From Ephesians, chapter 2, verses 8 and 9. For it is by grace you have been saved, through faith, and this is not from yourselves, it is a gift from God, not by work, so that no one can boast. From Acts 2, 38 through 40. Peter replied, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. The promise for you and your children, for all who are far off, for all whom the Lord will call. With many other words, he warned them and he pleaded with them, save yourselves from this corrupt generation. Well, today is an exciting day because we were going to get to do the baptism of Warren. Now, last week, if you were paying attention, this was, that was actually the lead up to today. We talked about what? Something as simple as Jesus loves me. And when we looked at all the wonderful attributes of what God does to show us that he loves us, 
This is how we show God that we love Him. By dying to oneself and accepting Him as our Lord and Savior. So what does it mean to be born again? Well, last week as we looked at John 3, we looked before, at the beginning of the chapter, before the, the infamous verse of John 3, 16. And there was a certain man who comes to Jesus in the beginning of that chapter. His name is Nicodemus. I just touched on him briefly last week. Nicodemus was one of the highest leaders, one of the highest rabbis of the Pharisees. But he has a burning desire in his heart. Even though everybody else is saying that Jesus is a heretic, that he's not real, that they want to condemn him, God is just working in Nicodemus' heart. And there's just something about him that he can't help but be drawn. And he's got questions. He's got a lot of questions. And he wants answers. But instead of coming to him openly during the day, he comes to him in the dark of night. And Jesus graciously obliges. And it is in the dark of night that Nicodemus asks him what one must do to be receive the kingdom of heaven. And Jesus says something that's almost too profound for him. He says, you must be born again. And Nicodemus immediately goes to the physical. And he goes, well, how's that even possible? There's no way that I can enter my mother's womb and be born again. Now, he knew that the minute one is born, you are born into sin. Right? We looked at that last week, from the very beginning. There's sin. There's no way we can get around that or away from that. So when Nicodemus asked him that question, well, how could I possibly do that? Instead of Jesus getting into a confrontational dialogue, he simply says, you who know the law, you who know everything about the earth, if you can't understand the physical things, how could you possibly understand the heavenly things? And he goes in to say, it's by being born again of the water and the spirit. He's talking about baptism. Now, this is not a new concept for Nicodemus. Just think about it. What had Jesus just done before he started his ministry? He went down to the river. And it was John who had been baptizing for quite a while. This wasn't something new. This was not a new concept. And it was John who baptized Jesus. So Nicodemus knew what the baptism was, and what he was telling him was, you have to die to yourself. You have to die to man's laws. You have to be born again which is the going down into the water. It's not the water that's magical, okay? Baptism, some people get so caught up in there that that's, that's what saves you. Baptism does not save you. It is only accepting Christ. But it is that act, it is that outward appear, uh, sign that we tell others that I am not going to come in the dark of night. I am not going to hide. I'm going to show everybody that I've accepted Christ. And so it is the act of going down into the water as the old person and the coming up in a new spiritual body, a new body in Christ. Now, I had to... So Chuck was, I thought about this, because poor Warren, he's been waiting a long time. See, we were going to do this on Palm Sunday. This was the big Palm Sunday service. And then COVID hit, and when did we have to quit? Palm Sunday. We didn't get to have that service, so he didn't get to do the baptism. And we've been waiting and talking, and he said, no, no, I want to do it in the church in front of everyone. I thought about that waiting time. What is it they say? Good things come to those who wait. But I think there's another message here. Because my point was, baptism is not what saves you. God forbid, and something happened to Warren or any one of us, before we had that chance to be baptized, that's not going to affect our eternity. See, Warren had already asked Jesus into his heart as his Savior, 
And so regardless if he got to do the baptism or not, that did not hinge on his redemption. <coughs> Jesus had already died for you, and you already get to go to heaven to be with him. Sometimes God makes us wait. So today we had to wait, but we're going to get to actually do that outward sign to show everybody of the inward commitment that we've already made. Those two scriptures that we looked at today, this one with Peter, if you remember, this was after the Holy Spirit had come into that room, that upper room, right? And it had gifted every one of them, and they started speaking in all the different languages to all the people that were there in Jerusalem at that time, telling them about the gospel message. And it was Peter, Peter, who had been the one that was so, um, what do I want to say? Well, he was outspoken maybe in the wrong things. When you got him in a crowd, he was not given the gift of public speaking. Let's just put it that way. But when the Holy Spirit lands on them, it says he boldly gets up and he just starts proclaiming the gospel like he's a little Billy Graham, like he's done it his whole life. And he tells them, he says, repent and be baptized. Don't you love that? Those are the first words that he tells them. Repent. What does repent mean? You know, I think in our society, we think that means just saying, I'm sorry. But what does it really mean to be sorry? Especially if you ask kids, are you sorry? Yeah. Or are they really sorry or are they just sorry they got caught? You know, and I hate to say, if you watch the news or you watch TV or you watch anything going on nowadays, anybody who says they're sorry, I think it's more they're just sorry they got caught. There is not that deep repentance of, I realize I did wrong. We're all human. We're all going to make mistakes. We're all going to do things that are wrong. But are we really need to apologize so much to the outward people, or is it really to God? It's the true, I'm sorry, I am a sinner, I cannot do it on my own. And that's what's followed up by Paul in Ephesians. It says, it's for by grace you have been saved through faith. This is not from yourselves. Which means we can say, I am so sorry. I am so, so sorry. I, I have to laugh, my uncle, God bless him. Um, he's the middle child for my dad down and. Uh, he was kind of ornery, let's just put it that way, when he was growing up. And Dad said he could remember yet. Every Christmas, he would sit to write his letter to Santa, and it would always start out the same sentence. Dear Santa, I am sorry. I am so, so sorry. <laughs> Sometimes that's what we do. We're sorry, but we can't help it. Right on our own, we're just going to keep making mistakes because we're simple creatures. Paul tells us it's by that grace of God that covers that sorry. <laughs> we can't do it on our own. It's only through the gift, the free gift given of Christ, that we receive his grace, we receive his redemption, we receive his salvation. Now see, the cool thing of that Acts chapter is, after Peter had done his little speech, and he told them to repent and be baptized, you know how many actually came forward? These are people that were convicted by the Holy Spirit in broad daylight, not in the dark of night. These were Jewish people. It said 3,000, 3,000 were convicted at that moment. And they went down to the water and they were baptized. That meant they had died to themselves as their gift back to God. That, my folks, is the message. If you take nothing else from that today, that is it. That on our own, we can't do it. It is only through Christ. And all that he asks of us is to die to ourselves, of our wants, of our desires, and turning it back over to him. excited every time we get to do a baptism. And especially when it's somebody older. Because they've had that opportunity to make that decision and to do it in front of everybody. 
in the day. To show people that they're saying to Jesus, I know you love me, and I love you, and this is my son. Will you join in singing, Come Holy Spirit, Come Heavenly Dove? you join me in prayer? Heavenly Father, we have heard the words in the scriptures talking about repenting and being baptized. We've heard the words of in name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. And we know in our hearts that we will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. But sometimes, Lord, it's hard. Sometimes our lives get so busy and so complicated that for some reason, it's maybe at the end of the day or at the beginning of the next day that we finally think about you. Help us to understand the words of Peter when he says, be warned, be careful. Remember that God is first in your life. Find those ways during the day that we can come to you and pray that we can come to you and rejoice. We can come to you when we are crying and we can come to you when we are laughing. For Lord, we cannot save ourselves, we know that. Only you can save us. So we come to you today in this form of worship in prayer. And we thank you for Warren and for his decision to be baptized. And we understand that we cannot do anything without you. We pray for those people that are listed that are dealing with difficulties, physical, mental, and we celebrate with those people who are doing better. And we thank you that you are with them always, no matter what. We give you praise and glory through the prayer that Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen.
There is a cold spot. <laughs> <laughs> but it's actually quite warm. <laughs> Dearly beloved, baptism is an outward and visible sign of the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, through which grace we became partakers of his righteousness and heirs of eternal life. Those receiving the sacrament and thereby marked as Christian disciples and initiated into the fellowship of Christ's holy church. Brothers and sisters, through the sacrament of baptism, we are initiated into Christ's holy church. We are incorporated into God's mighty acts of salvation and given new birth through water and the spirit. All this is God's gift offered to us without a price. Warren, on behalf of the church, I ask you, do you renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness, reject the evil powers of this world, and repent of your sin? If so, say I do. I do. Do you accept the freedom and power God gives you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves? I do. Do you confess Jesus Christ as your Savior, put your whole trust in His grace, and promise to serve Him as your Lord, in union with the church, this which Christ has opened to people of all ages, nations, and races? I do. And this is for the church. According to the grace given to you, I'm sorry, I one more for you. One more. According to the grace given to you, will you remain faithful, a faithful member of Christ's holy church and serve as Christ's representative throughout the word, world? If so, say, I will. I will. Okay, now to the church. Do you, as Christ's body, the church, reaffirm both your rejection of sin and your commitment to Christ? If so, say, we do. Will you nurture one another in the Christian faith and life and include Warren now before you in your care? With God's help, we will proclaim the good news and live according to the example of Christ. Go ahead and join in. We will surround Warren with a community of love and forgiveness that he may grow in his trust of God and be faithful in his service to others. We will pray for him that he may be a true disciple who walks in the way that leads to life. <laughs> Warren? Yes. Yes. Okay. I now baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Amen. Amen. <laughs> of your son Warren. We thank you for his courageous display outwardly showing everybody that you are his Lord and Savior. We pray that you will put a special protection and love around him. In your name we pray. Amen. Will you join in our hymn to breathe on the breath of God?
as things change, they sort of stay the same. So now we're into a different pattern, a different mode of offering. We've been doing this since April. It seems kind of strange, and yet um, we've done it. We have survived. Serving God doesn't have to be difficult. It's not about big, huge acts of service that everyone notices. Serving God is about the small things you do each day to point others to God. It's about waking up each morning and deciding that you're going to live for God despite what you might have been through. It's such an easy lesson and it's so easily forgotten. Through our offerings, we are reminded of this. Even though we aren't partaking through the pews, the offering tray is back there. It's a symbol of the fact that we believe this. It is the small things that get us through. And so, will you join me in an offering prayer? Lord, we thank you for the offering today. For those people who love the church and love you, giving of their time and their energy and their money in order to make sure that your kingdom is brought to earth. We ask that you take this offering and use it to your good use. In your son's name we pray. Amen.
The night in which Christ was betrayed, he lifted up the bread and he gave thanks and he blessed it to God Almighty and he broke it. And he said, this is now my body, the Messiah, that is broken for each and every one of you. Every time you eat of this, do this in remembrance of me. And after the supper, he picked up the cup. He gave thanks. He blessed it. And he said, this is now a new covenant. A covenant between myself and you and be my blood which will be poured out for the forgiveness of all sin. Every time you drink of this, do this in remembrance of me. And so as the body of Christ, we come before Christ's feast, eating and drinking, remembering as we partake those elements and proclaiming to all not just Christ's death, but his resurrection and his coming again. If you would join with me, I put the wrong one up. <laughs> Look to the next one. There we go. Here I am, Lord. This is our next day. Thank you. 
now may you go in the unbelievable love of God that will not let you go. May you go in the fellowship of the Holy Spirit that keeps us all bound together as one body in Christ. And may you go in the love of Jesus as you proclaim out these doors, I am saved and he is mine, now and forevermore. Amen. Thank you.